Hey there guys, welcome back. It's been about a week since I introduced the first episode of the Q&A or questions and answers video and uh, this will be the next video, episode 2, where I'll actually answer some of the questions. So uh, basically that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull up the uh, questions and just kind of answer them to the best of my ability and uh, here we go. So first question is from Dietra Brunner. She's commented on a lot of videos. Dietra, thank you for all your awesome comments. Uh, so I'll get to her question. Uh, have you considered selling your products yet? I think it's worth a shot. Uh, you've got a good talent uh, going for yourself. Uh, peace. So <laughs> thanks Dietra, I appreciate the compliments. Um, my wife and I have considered uh, selling them, doing like an Etsy store or something like that. Uh, my only problem is um, a lot of the things I build are kind of odd shaped or heavy. Uh, so they don't really lend themselves well to shipping. I have sold projects in the past on eBay, uh, different things like that. But your comments in particular have gotten me to uh, think about um, doing something on Etsy, especially like the fine woodwork stuff, little knickknacks, maybe shelves, something like that. Um, I do have a few things that I'm working on right now specifically for Etsy or to ship. Um, so I hope that answers your question. It's basically a yes. Uh, but we don't have an Etsy store yet. Um, and then the other uh, option on that would be maybe if I make an interesting project, I might make a couple extra ones and then just offer at the end of the video uh, for sale, you know, via PayPal, um, you know, through the YouTube video. Um, and then lastly, I do currently sell stuff on Craigslist in the Tucson, Phoenix uh, area, like garden beds and fire pits. <laughs> Started doing stuff like that. Um, and other odd project, bench, uh, benches, different things like that. So um, answers to your question is, is yes. I wish you lived close <laughs> because I'd be happy to sell stuff to you um, or even make custom stuff. So that's basically the answer to that question. I hope uh, that answers it and uh, we'll go on to the next one. So the next person is My Two Cents, uh, also somebody who's always commented very nice, uh, giving me very nice words and compliments. So I really appreciate it, My Two Cents. Uh, so anyway, here's her question. No questions just yet, <laughs> but I always look forward to your vids from the channel. Uh, I do say, uh, have to say your property looks amazing and those views in the background are something else. I agree, I love the mountains down here in Arizona. Um, so anyway, that's her question. Okay, maybe that is my question. Maybe you can show us around your place. Well, I did say in the earlier video that I might take the video around and walk around. Um, right now I have a huge cardboard box behind my camera because I don't have a remote mic uh, and it is a little bit breezy, so just to eliminate the wind noise. So I can't really walk you around now, but I can say that I do have about five or six videos on my rainwater harvesting system, some garden stuff, a trail around my property, uh, that you're basically going to see the entire property probably in the next uh, month, month and a half, so, um, or at least most of it. So my answer to that question is it's going to be fulfilled um, in some of the future videos. So I hope, <laughs> hope that answered your question, and uh, we'll go on to the next one. Uh, John Beardy Locks Zimple says, what are you drinking? Well, in the last video I was drinking a Coke. Um, also, Cokeman250 asked me that. Um, I, I have to say it's not just Coke, it's uh, Coke with uh, some of Kentucky's finest in it. Um, and I'll, I'll leave the rest up to you. Uh, next question, uh, Eco Womble, this is Paul. Um, he's from the UK and uh, my question is, what did you do before you did your homestead living? Uh, what's your background? What did you do for a living? Or what do you do for a living? And have you always lived in the area that you do now? Well, <laughs> it's kind of a long answer, but I'll try to sum it up quickly. Uh, what did I do before I did the, my homestead living? Well, basically the same thing. Uh, I use the term homestead loosely. Uh, we live on a rural property. We try to grow some of our own food. Uh, we try to do a lot of maintenance and different things like that on our own. I, I try to develop income opportunities from the projects that I, I do. Uh, you know, namely what Dietra uh, Brunner's question was about. Um, so that's kind of, it's more of like a modern homestead living. Um, so my ultimate goal would be to make my living <laughs> basically from my homestead or, or cut my costs so low that I could do most of that here. Um, but I do have a real job like everybody else. Um, I work as a firefighter. 
Uh, so I do that as kind of my day job. Um, but uh, everything else is <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, geared around the homestead or doing s stuff that's more of that self-reliant kind of stuff. Um, and then have I always lived in the area that I do now? Uh, well, I live in Arizona. Um, I grew up all around the U.S. Uh, growing up. Uh, lived in about 10 different states, uh, urban areas, rural areas. Uh, I was born in Louisiana, uh, so I went from the swamp to the desert. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've lived <laughs> in quite a few places, really uh, appreciated all my experiences, uh, but I am happy here. Uh, this is where my wife's family homesteaded over 100 years ago, and my wife wanted to be near here, so <laughs> that's why I'm here. Okay, um, next question is uh, from uh, O0OPKC00. Uh, I think I read that right, but we'll just call you PKC. What fascinated your attention to self-reliant living? Do you have an influence as uh, did you have an influence as you developed as an individual? If you can put an age as well, that would be great. Very curious. <laughs> well, uh, that's a. Uh, that's a philosophical question, and I'm not so sure I'm great at answering those, but I'll do my best. Um, so to start out with, I would say uh, self-reliant living, I guess it's always been in me just ever since a kid. Huge fan of MacGyver <laughs> as a kid. I know that sounds weird, but, you know, he was a guy who always uh, came up with a solution to his own problems. Um, and as far as uh, just living more in a self-reliant way, it's, it's be just being able to do more things for yourself than uh, needing to, say, call somebody in to do something for you. Not to say that, uh, you know, there aren't some wonderful conveniences. And, and where I live now, uh, we still do, uh, you know, I, I can't do everything myself. <laughs> you know, if I needed a, a transmission overhaul in my, in my vehicle, maybe I could do some of it. But uh, there's a lot I would need <laughs> quite a bit of help in. Um, but I try to do as much as I can. And the whole general uh, generality of self-reliant living um, is just more of a uh, uh, a little more freedom in the way I live. I live not in an HOA or not in a, a town with uh, heavy restrictions on things that I do, uh, you know, say with livestock or chickens or gardens or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of, you know, why I love doing it. Um, as far as influences, other than <laughs> MacGyver, um, I've had great influences. My father, uh, namely, he we grew up hunting and fishing and and, uh, you know, every time we'd go camping, he always had a little box with something in it. Or if he didn't have something, you know, we figured out a way to, to fix it. You know, <laughs> about a hundred ways before we tried to call somebody for it. Uh, not necessarily the most efficient way, but, uh, you know, that was probably my first influence. Um, other than that, uh, his father, my granddaddy, uh, he was a hunter and a fisherman down in Louisiana. And he grew up in a time when they hunted and fished for a large percentage of their food. Um, and I like to tell people when I grew up, probably the first six, seven, eight years of my life, I probably had 70 to 80 percent game meat over store-bought or purchased meat. Uh, you know, uh, either deer or, or fish or anything like that, duck. Um, so <laughs> I guess we have a little bit of a redneck upbringing. Um, but I would say uh, my granddaddy, my father, and then uh, my mother's uh, father, my grandpa, uh, he was a rancher in Nebraska. And uh, he was one of those guys who, <laughs> if the backside of his pickup truck got run over by a train, he would literally cut off the back of another pickup truck and weld it to the truck <laughs> and, and continue. I know it sounds crazy, but I literally have seen two vehicles on his ranch that were two combined trucks. Uh, so that's just, that's another one of those uh, kind of influences. Um, and then as far as putting it for an age, um, I would say it's just always been in me. I just like to do things for myself. So. Okay, next question is from Canadian Sasquatch Brewery. Um, the Texanadian himself, <laughs> or uh, that's the name I've given him. Um, he's a Canadian that now lives in Texas. Uh, and he has some cool brewing videos if you're into that kind of thing, meads and wines and beers. Uh, so if you uh, are interested in that sort of stuff, definitely check out his channel. Um, so his question is, how are the bees doing? 
If you follow the channel for any amount of time, you know that I kind of accidentally got into beekeeping. Well, I just checked on them uh, last night, uh, or two nights ago, and they're actually all doing well. I had to actually run out there and throw covers on the, uh, the makeshift hives that I built uh, because we had one of our few rains in Arizona, and I had kind of put off putting some sort of waterproof cover on the top. So uh, I did go out and check uh, on them this afternoon, and I do plan on doing another uh, couple videos very soon, uh, so I'll actually show them to you. Uh, so you can kind of see the, the hives in more detail and uh, basically how the bees are doing. But to your answer, they're doing great and uh, I definitely uh, am going to be doing some updates on those soon. Uh, next person, uh, Mackie087, uh, he's from Ireland. Uh, he says, we have a saying here in Ireland, if you don't have a neighbor next door, he's across the field. My question is, how close is your nearest neighbor? <laughs> well, it depends on what direction, because if you go that direction, it's probably over three miles. Uh, if you go this direction, it's probably about 500 feet. Um, I live in a cluster of houses where everybody bought five to 10 to 20 acre parcels. Uh, there's probably maybe seven or eight houses right near me. Um, so my two closest neighbors are, you know, a few hundred feet away. Um, and then after that, uh, you know, they start uh, ranging further. So not really a field. <laughs> Um, because we, we don't have any, many fields here in Arizona, but uh, I hope that answers your question. And uh, we'll get on to the next one. Uh, Bear Smoker uh, asked a question, how about a video on the rolling workbench? Uh, that's a video I've been meaning to do for a long time, um, and I totally forgot about it. And I'm glad you asked the question because I'm going to do that video very soon, within the next couple weeks. Uh, definitely. I get a lot of questions on that and it's uh, mostly a scrap wood workbench that I made um, out of uh, coal lumber from Home Depot and uh, oh, it's worked out so well for me and I've gotten so many uses and I've added little little things here and there to it to kind of make it more useful. Some of the things have worked and some of them haven't but uh, definitely look for that in the next couple weeks and thank you for reminding me. Okay next question is from Melissa V. Uh, she's up in Flagstaff, Arizona, and, and says she's got a garden and a little small farm she's starting. And she had some other questions, but basically her main question was, what part of Arizona are you in? Well, I'm in southern Arizona, very close to the Mexican uh, and U.S. border. And uh, I live south of Tucson, um, maybe 30 miles or so, 30 minutes, um, up into some mountains down here. And we are at about 4,000 feet in elevation. so. Some people who are familiar with the Tucson area may not think my property looks quite, say, Tucson, and that's just because we're a little higher in elevation. Uh, one interesting note, though, uh, for the, you guys in Europe, uh, where I live, it, we are actually all in kilometers down here, which <laughs> maybe not such a big thing, but a lot of people in the U.S. or family, friends, when they come and visit, are kind of uh, shocked when they see the, uh, the, I would say mileage marker signs, but they're kilometer marker signs. Uh, on the interstates and some of the highways south of Tucson. And it was the result of a, uh, it was like a trade experiment with uh, a trade between us and Mexico. So anyway, I think it's kind of cool. Um, obviously the metric system really does make a lot of sense. <laughs> so, you know, if we ever transition to it, probably wouldn't be such a bad thing. Okay, next question. It's from Ability Lemur 112 what vegetables are you planning on growing this season? Well, pretty much everything is planted. Um, I actually just got some late sweet potato slips in the mail uh, today, <laughs> about a month later than I had planned, but I just kind of forgot. Uh, but pretty much most of what we're planting is uh, the, the standard tomatoes and peppers and squashes and, and bush beans and string beans. Um, I got my fruit trees, peaches and apples and plums. Um, what else? Uh, got some winter melon planted, butternut squash, uh, eggplant, and uh, I'll be doing corn and squash, the native variety, down at my rainwater garden project. If you haven't seen that, look through the videos and uh, you'll see a couple videos uh, that detail that. Look for the more recent ones of that and you'll see kind of what it looks like with the squash and corn growing. It's a project I do just off of rainwater. Um, but uh, I think that's pretty much it. Of the tomatoes, I think I have 
maybe seven or eight varieties. Uh, three of them are native to the southwestern U.S. from the native seed search uh, store in Tucson. And uh, But I will be doing a garden tour video so you'll kind of see uh, pretty much everything I have planted. Uh, but it's pretty much more the traditional stuff uh, with a couple little uh, interesting things on the side. Okay. Next person is my sister, Blackberry Hideout. You'll see she comments on pretty much every video just to be nice. Um, but uh, she said, uh, uh, her question was, uh, you know, have you thought about, uh, have you thought about devoting a minute or two to talking about yourself, current thoughts, etc., in these videos? And <laughs> I will say uh, yes, and that's kind of what these videos are. I have a lot of people ask kind of what my thoughts are on, on stuff. You know, not that I'm an expert by any means, um, but uh, yeah, and you know, obviously I figured most of that will just be me answering someone's questions. So thanks, Jessica. And uh, if you guys are ever interested in a interesting blog called Blackberry Hideout, she posts different random stories of us growing up, and she kind of works them into a lesson about uh, early childhood development, which is uh, kind of her career path uh, that she's focused on uh, for most of her life. Uh, pretty cool stuff, I think. And we just got one more question that's actually like a five-parter. So hold on one second. 